In our final Clara capture video, we're going to be focusing on the third capture option, which is capture screen section. Okay, we very briefly touched on capture screen section in the first video. So now you know how to simply screen capture images into a Clara capture project. That could be a diagram or something like a graph or a table. But I also thought I'd share with you another clever way in which you use capture screen section to get the best out of Google Books. Now, Google Books can be a great online resource for searching for academic literature, but it's really designed to help you discover books, not read them from start to finish. So you'll often find there are pages omitted due to copyright reasons. Nevertheless, Google Books is a vast resource to take advantage of and want to consider factoring into your research strategy. I like to access Google Books via Google Apps, or you can just type it into Google. So this is Google Books. You might have a specific book in mind, or you might want to start by searching for a particular field of interest or some keywords. In this example, I want to explore the many interpretations of what the light bulb represents in Picasso's Guernica. If you see preview or full text next to the title, it means we can view the text and search for keywords. We won't be able to if it says snippet view or no preview. Let's dive into this one, the Guernica bull. Great, so it looks like we've got three page results that relate to our keyword search. So let's click view all. And I'm going to jump to this one on page 39. Now you might notice as I click on this text, I'm not able to select it, which means no copying and pasting allowed and no printing either. You'll discover in print preview that the text has mysteriously vanished. So this is where Clara Capture comes in. Using Capture Screen section, we can build a Clara Capture project consisting of screen grabs from the book. It might not be editable or selectable text, but we'll still be able to compile a really useful research document from it. I'm going to select Capture Screen section from the drop-down list, which provides a crosshair. You then just need to draw a box around the text you want to capture, being careful not to cut off any of the text. So mouse left click, hold that down, drag and let go when you're happy. As we like to be super organized, let's add the page number to help with referencing later on down the line. This is from page 39. Before I add another item, I just want to show you how it's possible to change the default option setting for the capture button. If you're planning to capture lots of screen grabs, it probably makes sense to change this to be capture screen section. So you'll find this under settings, then down to capture button default action and across to capture screen section. Okay, this looks like a good section, and this time we can simply just hit the capture button. Here's our crosshair, and let's click, drag and release. Again, stick in that page number. And I want to search for a different keyword within this book. And here on the left, we have the search in this book field. I'm going to enter the word cubism and click go. Perfect. Here it is on page 30. Let's capture this. So click, drag and let go.
Remember, you can create blank items. So that's file, new item. And you may want to record your own thoughts, put down some analysis, or you might want to type out the text from one of the screen grabs. So it places the new item at the bottom, but remember, we can reposition these to sit anywhere within the project. For any Dragon users out there, comma, Note that you can dictate straight into a Clara Capture item, exclamation mark, new line, microphone off. Right, I've captured all the research I need from this book. If you signed into a Google account, you could utilize add to my library. I think I'll choose reading now. That's now bookmarked in Google Books. So a launchpad top tip here. To access more details that might come in handy for referencing, click on about this book. Here we can obtain a description, which could be useful for something like a literature review. And this is selectable text. So it might be worth using capture selected text to capture this. As you might remember, that option also grabs the URL. It means we can then jump back to this book by clicking on the web link or view source. I'm going to move this item to the top of the project. It might also be nice to grab an image of the front cover. Again, I'm going to move this item to the top. So what else have we got here? You'll find selected pages and a table of contents. And if we scroll further down, you'll find the bibliographic information. Grabbing this ensures you'll have all the information you'll need for referencing this book. I'm going to recommend using Capture Screen section for this as Capture Selected Text struggles slightly with the formatting. For any EndNote users, you can also export a citation directly from here. Before saving, let's copy the title of this book which we'll use as the title for our Clara Capture project. So that's File, Save Project As. I think I'll separate these from my other projects by creating a folder specifically for Google Books. Let's paste that title. I'll click Save. And this error might appear, and that's because it doesn't seem to like colons. So if there's any in the title, just amend them to a dash. So let's send our project to Word. And here is all our book research ready to send to the printer. So well done. We've come to the end of this series on Clara Capture. Have a go yourself and you'll be an expert in no time. If you haven't watched the first two videos yet, please do, as then you'll have everything you need to get going. If you get stuck on anything, do not worry. Just leave me a question in the comments. Cheers for watching.